Well, hi there, Scott Page here with my second video series on Tyrannus, OpenTX, FreeSky, Telemetry, and all that's related. The video series is intended for those who are a bit tech savvy and want to get a little more out of their transmitter. The Tyrannus works just fine as shipped, but for those who want to stay on the leading edge or just want to experience a different facet of the RC hobby, this video series is to assist you. For this new series, I'll be using OpenTX 2.0 and later with FreeSky Tyrannus or the Tyrannus Plus. This information will certainly have application for other transmitters running OpenTX 2.0, including the 9X, the 9XR, and the 9XR Pro. This first video will be an introduction of OpenTX 2.0 as compared with previous OpenTX versions. I'll also be comparing OpenTX Companion with Companion 9X. For a person just getting started, they might be a bit confused by the difference between OpenTX Companion and OpenTX. Well, that's understandable. OpenTX is the firmware that resides in your transmitter. OpenTX Companion is a companion software program that you use to interface with OpenTX using your computer. OpenTX Companion will interface with the firmware in the transmitter simply using a USB cable between the transmitter and any computer running Windows, Mac, or Linux. Now let's back up a bit for those who have been using OpenTX or Companion 9X prior to the release of 2.0. There's a line in the sand between OpenTX Companion and Companion 9X. This line is drawn after Companion 9X version 1.52 and the next version which was called OpenTX Companion 2.0. And the difference is denoted even the name because it was originally called Companion 9X and then they changed the name to OpenTX Companion 2.0. There's also a division between the firmware version 2940 and OpenTX firmware version 2.0. Companion 9X is exclusively for versions of OpenTX that are before 2.0. Trying to use Companion 9X with OpenTX 2.0 will lead to confusion and frustration. Since I'm moving to the next level, I'll close Companion 9X and move forward to OpenTX Companion. OpenTX Companion is only for 2.0 and beyond, and it's recommended that you keep your Companion version in sync with the firmware you have on your transmitter. I'm currently using version 2.0.12, which is fairly stable. You can check to see what your version is by going to the Help menu and pulling down to About, and it'll show the version number right here. The menu drop-down also has a line that shows Companion Changes, which shows all of the previous Companion versions all the way back to even before 2.0, where we went from 1.52 to 2.0. You can also see the changes that have taken place in OpenTX in the Help menu if you choose Firmware Changes, and you can scroll back over time. But you can't tell what version your transmitter has without actually looking at the transmitter. So I'll show you using the simulator how to check out what version you have in your transmitter. A long press on the menu key takes you into the radio setup screen and then page forward about three times and you'll be to the version screen and it'll show you your version number. If it doesn't begin with 2.0 then it's going to be something prior to that. It could be a free sky version or one of the other builds prior to 2.0. So now let's look at OpenTX Companion 2.0 and compare to Companion 9X. I like the new look, it's a lot more clean, but if you like the look of 9X, you can still get that look by going to the settings menu and choosing the classical icon theme. The default is also available there as well as a monochrome, a monochrome blue, or a monochrome white. Additionally, you can set the icon size. For the purposes of the video, I have them set on huge. The advantage of having a separate software program is that you can have the transmitter with a smaller, less expensive screen but still have all the functionality of the more megabucks transmitter with a jumbo screen. Now that transmitters have voice capabilities, we no longer need to look at the screen while flying, so the size or placement of the screen is far less significant, and this makes a lot of sense to have a economy screen on the transmitter and then utilize the computer, which most everybody has, to do all of your more complex programming. Once a Tyrannus is upgraded to OpenTX 2.0, the method of interfacing the Tyrannus to the computer has changed as well. Before 2.0, it mattered whether the transmitter was on or off when you were making the connection. Now, for all intents and purposes, this distinction is no longer relevant unless you're trying to solve a problem. Now, if you try to connect and if you don't get connection, 
you're going to get a screen that looks like this, prompting you for the correct connection method. Now you simply press the trim switches to the center while powering up, and this launches you into what's called the bootloader. Now, to work in Companion, simply connect to USB. If you get a screen like you see here, then the computer is not seeing the transmitter, and that's time to start doing some troubleshooting. Companion is the vehicle to download new versions of firmware and can also write the new version of firmware to the transmitter. Companion can also download your radio and model settings so you can save them as a backup for later reference. I definitely need to mention that the Tyrannus can do any of this programming and functions without the use of Companion, but Companion gives you the advantage of having more screen real estate and it makes it a lot easier especially if you start playing with more complex programming or telemetry. Now let's check out the basics of Companion. You'll see some slight differences. Let's start off with let's make a new EEPROM and I'll double click to make a new model. This brings up the new model wizard which is really greatly improved but I'm going to cancel out right now and I'll go over that in a later video. I'll double click on the model and that'll bring up the basic window. Now I'm going to bring over a Companion 9x menus to take a look and compare. Notice that we still have our setup menu, we still have hilly setups, flight modes are the same, but here's a change. What used to be called sticks is now called inputs, and inputs has a lot of new features which I'll go over in a later video, and it has a lot more power. And then we have mixes. And what used to be called limits is now called servos. Servos basically does your sub trim and it also does limits, but it also goes a little beyond that, and so they've changed the name. And then you have curves. What used to be called custom switches is now called logical switches. What used to be called custom functions is now called special functions. And then you have telemetry, and you'll notice that the template screen is gone. One reason it's gone is that the wizard was the most important part of the template screen, and I'll show you in a later video how you can make your own templates or get some from others that work actually quite a bit better. So there's the biggest difference. Now we can also tab through, using the simulator, the transmitter screen, and you'll see that it corresponds pretty closely with what we just saw. If I hit the menu key once, quick press, and then I can tab across. We have the model setup. And then again, we have hilly setup, flight modes, inputs, mixer, servos, curves, global variables, which you don't have a tab for in Companion, logical switches, special functions. And here's a new one that you also don't have a tab for in Companion. And it's called Custom Scripts. And this is because the new 2.0 comes with the ability to be able to program. And you can program all sorts of amazing programs. And we're just starting to scratch the surface of what can be done there. And then you have your telemetry. Okay, well that accomplishes the goal of this first video, which is just to give a really quick look at 2.0, point out some of the differences, and then I'll go into more detail in subsequent videos. Well, this is Scott Page. Thanks for watching.